Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Jochem. So gang, I think we had a lot of fun doing those clays and rearrangements. And even if you didn't, too bad. We're doing something extremely similar. So kind of one of those, we're doubling up on skills we already learned, but here's another reaction name because someone found something out that was different, but slightly so similar that it was a big deal. Here, we're gonna talk about the cope rearrangement, okay? So if you put in the bit of effort you needed to become a clays and rearrangement master, then you're basically a cope rearrangement wizard. All right, so just, we're gonna do two examples just like before. We're gonna become pros at this and then we'll move on, okay? So a cope rearrangement, what is it? It's uh, super similar to a clays, as I said, and you kind of have this open chain deal. So it's aliphatic, right? And what you're gonna be looking for is the same pattern. You're gonna have a one, five, dying type deal. You're gonna have two double wands that you're gonna be working with. And they're gonna be separated by like, you know, like one, two, three, four, five, right? So however you wanna count, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. They're five positions away, all right? So what's gonna happen, much like before, the arrows are exactly the same. So it doesn't matter if you start from here to here, here to here, we're symmetrical. So this carbon, you know, and this, this will switch back and forth at higher temperatures, roughly 170 degrees Celsius. That's what I found in my quick joodling of it. But if you, so this carbon will say, okay, I'm going to actually grab this carbon down here and I will do so by taking these electrons in here. Okay. So at this point we need to play again, the don't break the octet rule game. So this carbon will say, whoa, I not allowed, right? I need to move these somewhere. So what we can do is we can bounce these right here. And again, that'll be a problem with this carbon. There's no double bond to work with. So what we can do with this bond is actually move it right here because this carbon lost bonds when this carbon selfishly took it to bond to a carbon that is on the end of the other chain, okay? The other side of the chain, rather. So we'll break out the green marker again. We'll do a one, a two, a three, four, and a five, and a six. I'll keep the green marker. Okay, so clearly didn't touch anything on the benzene ring. That was for pure decoration. Okay, so that is carbon number three that I just drew. So remember, I have a double bond here now. Awesome. That's the carbon two. We have a single between two and one. So now all I've done is two and one. Between one and six, we just have a plain old single bond. We got nothing, it's just a plane between six and five. And the wonderful double bond is now between five and four, okay? Super simple, straightforward, not a big deal. Let me clean this up, we'll do one more, call it quits. Okay gang, let's just do this last example, call it quits. All right, so if we take a look at our wonderful new example, we see some heat, we see some equilibrium arrows. Uh, so what's going on? Well, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we see we have a one, five, dying. Oxygen is not in the chain, so it's not a clays in, but we got a cope rearrangement on our hands. Okay, so we got a jar with three arrows that's concerted one step, you know, mechanism type deal. So I'm gonna use blue for this. So what we'll do here, doesn't matter, uh, we can go from here, we will have this carbon, take these bonds up here, grab down there. We'll bounce these over here, okay? Because if we don't, we'll break the octet rule with this carbon, but by moving this over here, we have to do something here or else we break the octet rule at this carbon. So we can bounce these electrons up as a double bond, which all checks out because this carbon can accept a bond because the, term, the terminal carbon took the double bond for its own selfish agenda and went south with it, okay? So what does this look like? Well, we we'll use our handy dandy. Oh, I don't know how to count. Four, three, two, and one. Okay. Now we'll go back to black. So what do we got? So uh, we'll start with six. Is, so five. Or actually, we'll start here. So I have my OH. Sorry, just had like a brain lapse. I have my OH. That is still single bonded to carbon number four. And four and five have a double one. So now I can do four and five. Okay, so five is single bonded to six. Six is single bonded to one. 
One is single bonded to two. Two is double bonded to three. And we got the whole gang. So we are good to go, right? Well, not quite, okay? In some examples, always stop and check. Did you produce some enol that needs to tautomerize to a ketone? In the first Claisen rearrangement we did in the Claisen rearrangement video, we were working with phenol. And we know phenol doesn't ta tautomerize to its keto form because of you know the whole maintaining aromaticity in the ring thing. But I hope you're seeing this right here. So this is going to, we'll do the big arrow down this way because we know technically that's also an equilibrium, right? We always know that the enol is going to the keto at a large, at a large rate and then some small amount of keto is going back to enol, right? But we know that we're going to end up with this. And I can number these two. Four, five, six, one, two, and three. Okay, so just the quick, you know, polymerization, then this is what we're working with as a final product, right? Okay, so just watch out for that. At the very end, just check for, did you make an enol? Flip it to the carbonyl. Okay, gang, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I love you all. Check out the worksheet. And more importantly, I'll see you in the next one.